Hey guys, I got a metal lathe in the mail today. It's the MX180D. Uh, just got it in, should have had it in like a week ago, but we had some issues with the carriers. I don't really want to get into that, but anyways, I'm not gonna bore you with an unboxing and watching me struggle to get it up on that bench over there, so probably just uh, do a quick clip of the lid off of it so you can kind of see how it's packaged in there. We'll do a little bit of showing of the crate, just real fast. We'll get everything laid out on the table over there and kind of go over like what's included in there, what, what all is in there, what all isn't included, uh, what stuff I had to buy separately. Cause I do got a pretty little pile of accessories to go along with this that I've purchased now. Okay, so that's what she looks like on the inside. Uh, I don't see a lot of loose parts floating around necessarily yet, so maybe that's a good thing. Are you finding parts floating around in there? Not cool, China. JK, it's had to come a long way. This thing is just falling apart. Oh, uh, Phillips screwdriver, quite filthy and disgusting. Another Phillips screwdriver, quite filthy and disgusting. I don't know if you can tell. You see all that black on there? All those black lines, that's actually metal flake and grease. <laughs> Ooh, this is uh, for uh, suppositories, is that what you call it? Or a uh, little bidet cleaning maybe? <laughs> Metal gear. Something that was packaged. Metal gear. Metal gear. Metal gear. Metal gear. Metal gear. Couple wrenches. Another wrench. Broken piece of plastic. Sorry if you hear something bouncing around on top of me. That's my silly cat upstairs. Going crazy because he hears me in the basement. Couple handles for the dials. Chuck key with the spring on it. There's another chuck jaw. Chuck jaw. Chuck jaw. Some Allen wrenches. This is not a live uh center this is just an mt2 i'm assuming it's mt2 mt2 taper uh, center it's kind of crap it's really hoping for a live center on that one but eh, that's all right also something that this does not have is there's no dial indicator here or there. Man, that stuff. Just slide that around like that easily enough. Oh, damn it. Damn me. No, oh, that's a little bit better there. Yeah. That's definitely smoother. Wow, that guy goes out pretty far. Look at that. Look at that. Bring it out all the way. We got our keyway on there. A threaded end that that's running on. There's our there's our taper. Ooh, look at that. I don't know if you can see this bolt right here that is 
majorly off center. Here's the key way, the key for this. A little bit of threads are on the side. So anyways, that threading that's back in there is the threads for this bolt that's exposed. And then that pulls down on this little... Actually, I can just pull it apart and show you because I know that I'm not going to lose nothing. There's a little cam right there. So you can see... Let's see if we can get in here again. There we go. You can see right there, you can see where the light is, is where the uh, hole here cuts off. Right here where it's threaded, there's an exposed section right here where there's no wall. I think you can see that, yep. Okay. That has this threading here exposed on it digging into that and that is why we have those gouges on there That's why it's so stiff, because we've got the lock off there all together. It's so stiff because the further back, the further back the shaft goes, the more, for, if it's out of angle, out of true at all, the more pressure it's putting on that uh, bolt that's coming out from this. <laughs> so, yeah, resettable dials. I guess so. <laughs> no indicator off of it. No indicator line. Just a spinning dial. Okay, moving on. Super stiff. Oh, not even cutting into anything. Got to use both hands to turn it. Look at that dial. Okay. That's resettable. That's nice. I think it's resettable just off of tension. Poor fitment. Nothing to set it off of though. No indicator there. This uses a flat tip. No wrench head on it. Alright. Uses a flat tip to screw that in. So we'll use one of our provided screwdrivers. Wait a minute. They were both Phillips, remember? Yeah, so there's a little bit of slop in that, but backlash well, that actually turns pretty smooth Zero's right there, so it's not like they had it offset to where zero is over here, moving over. And there's definitely no indicator line on that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all right. Wasn't planning on using that anyways. Yeah, I'll get the lighting figured out here one of these days. So on the back side of the cross slide, it has this dial indicator that's down inside there. It's got 0 to 45, 0 to 45 on it with no indicator line back here. 
so I'm not going to be using that. I already had watched in another video, a couple videos, several videos actually talking about how these have poor uh, dial gauges on there. So I already knew I wouldn't be using that. Watched in another video, a guy was using uh, one of these protractor angle finders uh, for his cross slide. Just a general protractor. So he would set it on the lower block here. Set it like that. Yeah, I thought that was a good idea, so I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and buy one of these ahead of time and just do that from the beginning. Not bad, not bad at all. I mean, yeah, it's got some line in it, but 